There you go. Hello. Hello. Hi guys. Hello. 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 Okay. Hello. What can I do for you? I love your hair. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations on coming back for season three. Thank you. I know you, this is not, like Katie's such a fascinating character because she's got a lot on her plate, obviously. But it's so nice to see, like, you know, she feels like she needs to do things for her family, and she's going out and doing them on her own, you know. And, she, and that, but now her and Will are kind of united and they're on the same page. So it's been fun for you to kind of like get on the, for you and Will to kind of team up now, and you don't have to hide stuff from them as much. Like, Absolutely. I mean, I, I definitely think there's a challenge. Coming to season three, you know, Will and Katie are in a good place and they're in a strong place, um, and they've found at least a temporary safe haven. But I do think that Katie has a drive towards resistance that, in Will, is a drive towards protecting his family, and so they're um, he's looking kind of at the micro and she's looking at the macro, and that's. That's a source of friction, and I, you know, I think one of the things that's really great about the way that this relationship, I think, is written is that you have two people who have equally viable ethical arguments to make. One of them is not right, and one of them is not wrong, and so that just, that's a constant, that's the fault line, right, that the show is... There's little earthquakes, there's big earthquakes, and then there's some stability, and then there's an earthquake, you know, that kind of thing. There's no st not, not stability for too long. There's always something that's going to come up, but it was fun, though, to see her, like, almost be, like, between Broussard and Will and kind of navigating that relationship because they're kind of at odds with each other, and she has to kind of keep the peace, and then mm -hmm. she's got the kids to worry about, too, so, I mean, there's this, she's just, like, the, the beating heart of that group, and I think without her, that group is a little rudderless, but it's, so it's nice to see like Kate, you know, taking charge and, and like she always has and she always felt the need to do something. Um, so yeah. is, are you excited to kind of continue that but on the road in season three, like it seems like the dynamic mm -hmm. might be completely changed for me next season. It's going to be very changed. I, you know, I think one of the biggest, um, one of the explorations that I'm most interested in kind of leading into season three is the relationship between Katie and her son. And, you know, she, I think it's, it's one thing to take a stand and follow your heart and do what you think is right. It's another thing when you see your child do the same thing, knowing that that got you into a shitload of trouble and, quite frankly, it almost got you killed, right? And so, I think she's really hoping, as all parents do, to save her son the colossal mistakes that she's made and to try and educate him a little. Teenage boys aren't famous for wanting to learn lessons from their parents. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see. Do you think Katie, if given a chance, would forgive her sister for the betrayal season? You know, I mean, I, Katie knows who Maddie is, and she knows that she's a little selfish, she's a little shallow, she's kind of a moral relativist. She's also my freaking sister, and I don't know that there are many, if any, things in the world that aren't forgivable, um, especially when they may be the only two people of their generation that are blood left in the world. I think it would be a question of, of would Maddie ever ask for forgiveness? You know, I mean, I all Katie knows is that her sister sold her out for her and her family to to be sent to the factory. Um, I think the most heartbreaking part of that, in some ways, to Katie is why didn't you trust me to get you out of this? Why did you? Why did you resort to that? I know that Maddie is somebody who when she's backed into a corner, can do some pretty terrible stuff. But you weren't backed into a corner. I gave you an out. Do you not love me enough to take it? You know what I mean? I, I think it's that, like, there's a big fight coming down the hill, <laughs> eventually. Um, but I think at the end of that, yeah, is, is sisterhood. It's gonna be a brawl. I, th I, I think it might be a brawl. I, I mean, <laughs> Amanda's a really good boxer, so I kind of hope it doesn't come to that, but, um, I can, I'll start bobbing and weaving. I'm just like, <laughs> float like a butterfly. So, as an actress, you've played in, you've been in so many genre things at this point that people just love, like, and are you seeing the, uh, the strong roles for women and the really needy good roles 
us women are in genre roles right now, like with science fiction, or with maybe badassery. Like, I, badassery, by the way, is my new favorite word. Yes. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, what's what's interesting about your question is I think, in a way, in my mind, the concept of genre itself is falling apart, which is to say that genre used to mean we don't have as much respect for this as we do legitimate drama. Um, but then you have a show like Walking Dead that's, at least, you know, I, I can only speak for when I was on it because I, I never watched the show, but like, in those first three years, that was world-class drama. You can have zombies in it, but it's world-class drama. And I do. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Um, you got it. But to, to sort of, you know, finish answering your question, I think... I think roles for women are expanding in really exciting ways. I still think we need to keep an eye on it because it's really easy to go, oh my god, we had The Hunger Games, we had every other Jennifer Lawrence movie, do you know what I mean? We had Betty Amy Adams, it's great. But, like, you know, it's not that the Bechdel test is infallible, but take a look at Arrival. There's one and a half women in that entire film. Yeah. It's an amazing film, and it's a great role for a woman. But there are, you know, a dozen men with interesting things to do in that. And then there's Amy Adams, and there's flashbacks of a daughter who I don't know if she ever runs around. And so, again, fantastic. But maybe it's a false peak, do you know what I mean? Like, maybe we've got to the top of the mountain, planted our flag, and you look up and you're like, oh, that's Everest. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we still got work to do. That's my thinking. All right. Thank Thanks, y'all.